Film cameras have been with us since the Ottoman Empire was still a thing. And almost since the beginning, people have been trying to hack their workflow to make getting great images a little easier. Sometimes it's to save time, other times it's to save money. Today on Overexposed, we're gonna go over a list of 10 of my favorite film photography hacks that I think might can stand a chance at improving your workflow. So let's get to it. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video for my favorite film photography hack. The first film photography hack on the list, and one of my favorite things to do is to capture double exposures. Some make it easier than others, but whether you know it or not, your camera can oftentimes combine two images on top of one another for a really cool combined exposure effect. Why would you wanna do that, you ask? Well, take a look at some of these examples to see what you can get. You can use double exposures to create interesting and creative looks. Making a double exposure is just another tool in your arsenal to help you be more creative and take really captivating film photographs. And the best part is you get these results in camera. If nothing else, it's something fun to experiment with. So check it out. My next film photography hack is not so much a hack as it is a piece of practical advice, but save your negatives. Nothing says amateur hour like throwing away your negatives. When I first got into film photography, back when I was a wee lad, as soon as I would go get the images back from the pharmacy, the first thing I would do was throw the packaging and the negatives away. Lot an idiot. In the modern era though, now that most of us are getting our film developed from labs, labs are making you pay extra and you have to select an option to get them to send your negatives back to you. So if you're not careful, you'll send your film to a lab to be developed and the negatives will never come back. You'll only get the prints you requested or the digital files. So make sure that you always get the negatives. If you later on want to get a vastly different look or a higher resolution scan, that's just not possible if you don't have the negatives. So just a practical piece of advice, save your negatives, even if it costs a little extra money. I can't sleep at night knowing that I'm gonna be stuck with whatever scans that the lab deems acceptable. Act number three, good artists create, but great artists steal. Use Instagram, photo books, to get ideas from other photographers. A lot of times we wanna be creative and try to reinvent the wheel, but photography is a discipline that has been around, like I pointed out, since the 1800s. Most of the good ideas have been done before. So feel free to use someone else's work and draw on that as inspiration. You can't be inspired or get new ideas if you're not consuming photographic media. So whether it's Instagram, books, websites, make sure that you're looking at images. You have no idea where that flash of inspiration is gonna come from. So expose yourself to photographs, that'll oftentimes lead to new projects. Hack number four, get a reciprocity calculator. One of my favorite things to do is to go out at night and take images. And if you've shot any film for any amount of time, you know that at night, long exposures get kinda weird. These days, there are tons of companies out there making reciprocity calculators for our cell phones that'll help making those complicated long exposures much, much easier. But basically the problem is this, as exposure time increases past a second or so, not all films behave the same. Some require more light than others, and that is the problem of reciprocity failure. Make sure the next time you're going out for some night photography, you pick up a reciprocity calculator to help you with those complicated long exposures. At number five, don't put your film in your luggage when you're going through TSA. So you're just minding your own business, passing through airport security, taking off your shoes, taking off your belt, putting all your things in and out of trays. You've got all your film bundled up and you're going on that trip of a lifetime to Italy. You pass through TSA, put your luggage on the plane, take several modern masterpieces all around the city of Rome. You send the film to the lab to be developed and then it comes back destroyed. Don't put your film in your luggage because x-rays have the tendency to harm unexposed film. Here are some examples of some images damaged by x-rays. How do we fix this? Well, there are a couple of ways. First, bring your film on your carry-on and ask for a hand check and explain to the TSA officers what's going on. You're carrying magical photographical lot papers and the x-rays will damage the film. There is another solution. There are x-ray proof bags that you could put your film in, but probably that's gonna have to be pulled out to be checked anyway. The sixth hack on my list, reload your own film. I don't know if you guys were aware of this, but in 2022, the year of our Lord, shooting film is not cheap. In fact, it's very, very expensive. As inflation runs rampant through the American economy, we can expect film prices to continue to increase over the next, over the foreseeable future as well. But you can alleviate some of this strain 
by buying bulk rolls. Yeah, and yes, places still sell this, including B&H and some of the larger retailers. And they also sell loading devices that you can use to load the film yourself. So make sure you're saving your film canisters uh, because they will come in handy when you're loading your own film. So long as you have your own film canisters lying around and you've bought your Ilford HP5 in bulk, you can be shooting that next roll of HP5 for next to nothing. As shooting film gets more and more expensive, we may have to resort to even more dramatic cost-cutting measures to try to stay in the game. Hack number seven, freeze your film. Did you know that if you freeze your film, it will actually gain magical power? Okay, maybe that's not entirely true, but it will basically stop your film from aging. Film, specifically color film, is made up of organic materials that can change as they age. This unfortunately can lead to color shifts and crazy results. Keeping your film cold and away from heat and temperature variations and moisture can help slow the aging process down and make sure that you're getting good consistent results from that expensive film that you've already paid for. Learn the Sunny 16 rule. Did you know that there's a clever way to meter the film in your camera without all the fancy schmancy electronics that newfangled cameras these days have? You can use that baseline rule as a good jumping off spot to give you an idea of where you should be metering your film if you have no access to a lot meter. It can even take into account weather conditions, but we'll save that for another video. If you learn this trick, you won't always have to have a lot meter around or even your cell phone. Shoot expired film. Now, I know it's ironic that we just talked about freezing your film in a way to stop the aging process, but in the film community, you may well know that it's a very popular thing to shoot expired film. Some of those same color shifts and inconsistent results that you get from aged film are also sometimes desirable. Um, they can lead to really cool results and give you a, a vintage aesthetic that may be desirable for the work that you're trying to produce. So there's another film photography hack. It can lead to cool, exciting results that you may have not otherwise seen. The last and my most favorite film hack is to rough up those negatives. Film photography is an analog physical medium. And with that, we have the ability to manipulate that negative to create really cool, different effects. So some people burn the negatives. Some people put the negatives back into the film canister with different chemicals um, and create film soups that lead to really cool, interesting results. That is one of the beauties of film is we have control of that physical output. Possibilities are quite literally endless with what you can do. Most importantly though, above all, remember to have fun. Now that was a cheesy way to wrap up the video. But anyway, those are 10 of my favorite film photography hacks. If you enjoyed this video, check out this other video where I show you five affordable medium format cameras. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. See ya.